Hi friends, Candace Gillespie here with Candace's Canvases. Today I will be showing you this beautiful From Our Gnome to Yours um, card that I made. And I got the stamp set from a card maker magazine. Can't remember exactly what it was called, but uh, before I dive in, I just wanted to um, invite you to follow me on any kind of social media platform, most of them anyway, um, or my mailing address. Um, all that information will be down in the description bar below. Feel free to join my interactive Facebook group page called Crafters Anonymous by Candace's Canvases. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and let's get started. All right, first things first, I am, I have just a five and a half by four and a quarter card front here and I am stamping the little house, the little gnome house. What is the proper name for that? I have no idea. Anyway, initially I thought I was going to just use the house and the sentiment on the front, and I will be doing that, but I decided I wanted to color a background. Um, in the meantime, I wanted to color the, a background and these separately. So in the meantime, I am going to color in these images using some Copic markers. and. This is my first go at coloring an actual scene with my Copics, so I'm new to Copic coloring. Um, let's see, I I think I only have a select few markers as of the filming of this video. I still have a select few, but I have since gotten a few more. And I'm just starting with a lighter color over giving it a wash of the lightest color, and then I am going in with my darker color adding the shadows where I think shadows would be. And then in just a second here, I'll go back in with my lightest color and I'll color all over it once more. So some very simple coloring just to give it some dimension. And I'm using this lightest color for his nose. I don't have any peachy or skin tone colors yet. I do now, but as of the filming of this video, I just used some gray to give it some shadow and it worked fine. It did bleed a little bit into my image. Like the, the pink, the light pink color kind of pushed the gray out, <laughs> but I'm gonna use gray anyway to kind of shadow his beard. And for the scene I have in mind, he's gonna hold that lantern kind of in the middle of his beard. So there's a shadow kind of on the outside of it. So I used a neutral gray and then I used the lightest neutral gray and then a colorless blender here to just kind of blend out any hard spots I might have. Now for the lamp, I am going to kind of make this like a steel looking kind of. So I used a darker gray and then a medium gray and then a lighter gray to give it some, a highlight in the middle there. And I don't have any yellow Copics yet, so I just have these ink, water, what is it, water-based inks, mark ink markers here. And I gave it a little yellow, a little orange, coloring the candle red, and then some yellow here for a glow. And then onto the little mushroom cap house. I think there is a technical term for the mushroom cap house. I cannot remember what it is. So I'm using, I cannot remember if this was my darker color. This is my darkest color. And I think I used the darkest first because there were all these little bumps. And you can see in a second here that I got, I thought, man, I am just not doing a very good job coloring around these. So I'm just gonna color over them. <laughs> And it totally worked out in the end, and I'll show you how I kind of fixed that. So I'm using green here because I, at this time, I don't have any brown. But if you mix um, complementary colors, they will make a brown color. So um, I'm just coloring some shadowed areas with some brown. And then going in with my mid-tone, and then I should be going back in with my light tone here 
forgot to do the chimney and I'm using the darker color to give it some bumps to make it kind of resemble bricks. And I'm coloring these, just giving some shadow to the bottoms of those little bumps. And then I'm using my colorless blender to push the color out of those little no nodules or nodes or whatever those little bumps are. And then coloring in the windows with this yellow water-based ink marker. See, you don't have to have everything to make something look festive or the way you want it to. I just kind of combine what I do have. <laughs> so coloring the smoke gray and trying to give it some highlights with some um, colorless blender and some lighter gray. This is kind of a sandy color marker. I colored the underneath of that a sandy color marker and then I went in and with a darker color um, to kind of give it some shadows under there. And then I'm just using a brown. This is this might be early espresso from Stampin' Up. I think I have all of their markers as of like 2014 maybe when I was a demonstrator. And most of them, they still have ink. Some of them have since dried, but um, it works fine. <laughs> totally fine. Well, that's what I like about the Copics is I can re-ink them and I don't have to buy a new marker every time. I'm actually really excited to dive into the Copic world. <laughs> so far, I have just probably used them every single day and I love them so much. I've been practicing with free classes online kit and clouder kit and clouder has a really awesome free marker 101 class um, and they give you free images to color and practice for hair and skin and stuff and it's really cool so I just colored those leaves the ivy growing along the side there in green and then I put a darker green along the middle where the veins would be and then I'm coloring the body of the mushroom um, the same kind of darker sandy color giving it some highlights here a little extra green on the ivy and then I'm gonna bring in I'm cutting down some more card base here to make the background. So I'm pulling out a bunch of Distress Oxide inks to make the background. I'm going to do a combination. Oh, here I'm just spreading out the color or the the light. I, I think it would, the way I think it would be flowing <laughs> onto the grass there in the front of the window and then coming out of the top of the house there, the second story. Because as I, I'm going to keep that in mind where the windows are as I build this background. So I'm gonna use, and I can't, I'm not at home right now to um, pull out these inks. Faded Jeans, I think was the first color. Wild, Wilted Violet maybe was the second color. Like I said, I'm not at home to pull out these inks to tell you what they were. I can just try to catch them on the screen. Broken China was the second. This is the um, black, what is it called? Black soot, the black soot. Give it an um, overview or once over with some black soot and then sprinkle on some water. Then I'm gonna do it again with the, did I say this was faded jeans? Faded jeans, wilted violet, Just what I would, in my mind, what I think a night sky would look like. This is the broken china. And then I'm going to use, oh, sprinkle it one more time with water. Getting some variation in the droplet sizes there. And when you do two different layers or even more layers, you get different um, depth of, of droplet looking things. And so it kind of gives you the impression of really close snowfall or it gives it can give you the impression of um, far away shiny 
Anyway, so this lighter color green is going in the bottom because that's going to serve as like the highlight. And then um, the darker green is just going to go on top. I'm going to give it a once over on the around the, around it. Keep it in mind where I think the windows will shine light out of. So I gave it a once over with the black soot. Cleaning up my mess here. And then I'm just going to fussy cut these the little house out. I don't think there was a die for the house. There is a die for the little hands that's holding the lantern. And I think for the hands that are, it's, this stamp set also comes with hands holding a gift. Um, and the little gnome, but there wasn't one for the house. That's okay. Easy enough to fussy cut. It was pretty easy. Okay, see how it's going to be sitting kind of off to the right there where where the, the lighter parts of the image and the background are, are going to be. Then I'm just using the black, the 100 Copic to color around the edges. And then here I'm using an N8 to sketch out some trees. Now me being an amateur beginner Copic color, I am coloring over this Distress Oxide ink. I have a feeling it's probably not the best for your Copic nibs. Um, if anybody wants to verify that, confirm it down below, feel free. <laughs> um, so at your own risk, color over um, oxide, dis distress oxide ink. But here I'm just sketching in some shadows of trees here that in the background, they're going to be a little bit lighter. Just to give the impression of distance. And I have this, this is like a shimmery ink and I have no idea what it was for. It was in the clearance of a Stampin' Up! thing so long ago, years ago, five years ago, four years ago. And, um, and I don't even remember what it was for then. I think I was just like, oh, the shimmer, I want to do that. <laughs> so anyway, I still have it and I love it. I still use it, obviously. Just flick that onto the background and I'm using the black soot to kind of just go around the edges. It is nighttime, so I wanted to give the house shouldn't be bright. It should have a little bit of shadow around it probably even more than what I put. I'm, I'm no professional colorist, have no official training, except the coloring that I've done since I was a child. <laughs> so, I don't know, I, you could say I have some hours put in coloring, but uh, no official training. Um, but I love to do it, so, and I watch a ton of tutorials and stuff. I just do what I can to kind of deepen my understanding of color, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so I put a bunch of adhe uh, foam adhesive to the back and I'll stick that down. I just put a little bit of glue where I was touching it a lot because maybe the oils would make it not so sticky. And there you can see it's kind of brighter where um, the window is shining, would shine out onto the floor and into the back there. You don't know if there was a window in the back of this guy. It just looked cool. Okay, then I used um, a dark gray to just give it a little grounding shadow. And then I'm going to take the stamp that says that says from our gnome to yours. Oh, before I do that, though, before I stamp it and um, heat emboss it, I'm going to just hit it with my heat tool, make sure it's nice and dry. I forgot to add some shadows. There would be shadows from the light coming from the house, so I did that real quick. Drying it with my heat tool. Then I added some dark, dark green. Well, some dark green, not really, really dark green, but some dark green because there might be a hint of light shining on the trees so you might see a little bit 
of green in there. And then I use my anti-static tool to rub on there and then stamp that down with some Versamark ink and then just some black heat embossing powder. That was Sammy. He's, he got a fire truck for Christmas so he was playing right here. Then I'm making my card base, a standard five and a half by four and a quarter card base here. And I was reluctant to trim off any from my from my new little panel here, but I think I did trim off just a hair, so I had a white border around it. Now the inside, I like to mat the inside also. I know some people just stamp right into the inside, but I like to mat it. Excuse me, because it makes the card more sturdy. So the second part of the sentiment will say, with love at Christmas. So from our gnome to yours, with love at Christmas. Here it is. I love this first of fine black onyx ink for sentiment stamping. It I feel like it never lets me down. <laughs> then I'm just gonna glue that right on to the back here. And then this is where I'm going to use the little gnome guy. But before I do, i got to dress him up with this little gift, there, or the little lantern there. And I'm going to cut them both out. I'm just getting some washi here, and I'm going to put it on my skin a couple times so it's not so sticky that it tears, although sometimes it does. I need to find a better solution for this. But this works for now. Those are cut out. And the little hands are going to go here. And on the back of the lantern, I'm going to put some um, foam adhesive. But I am going to glue down like the cuffs of his little mittens there. I'm going to glue that edge down. And here I'm, I am using this yellow marker to kind of put a glow on his beard by where this lamp is. And later on, I don't have this in the video, but I did later take some, um, they I show you in the pictures at the end, some Wink of Stella, and I colored in the windows on the front of the mushroom house, and I colored in his beard also with some clear Wink of Stella. And here is where I'm gluing the cuffs down, but the lantern and the mittens are, are lifted up with some foam adhesive. And I'm going to glue him down to the bottom left. Seems to be my go-to spot. Give him a little bit of shadow here. And then put my little signature stamp and that sums up this card. Super fun. I'm hooked on Distress Oxide inks and I'm hooked on Copic markers. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a joyful comment, and share it with your friends. And stay tuned for more fun videos. I have a couple more in queue, including the summary of my seven tags videos. I didn't have them downloaded on my computer and I'm at home right now. So when I get home, I'll finish that up for you. Thank you guys so much, and we'll talk soon. Have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye.